Now it's important to know that everything we do in this video is based on Reaper 7.18 or newer. So make sure you update if you're using an older version as these options or preferences have changed. So we're gonna focus on splitting our items, which means these are known as media items. We can click in any of them, hit a key, and it splits that item. So let's see how that's done. If we go up here to the actions menu, show action list, and type into the filter split item. And here we'll see all the actions we could use for splitting our items. As you'll see, there's quite a bunch, but the default one that most of us use is this one right here. And we could trigger it with the keyboard shortcut S. But of course, you could change this if you want or change the S key to other actions if you want. And it's gonna split our items at the edit or play cursor and then select right. So if we click in here, type S, it splits our item and selects the right side, which makes sense if you wanna work through your song from left to right, it's already selected. Or we could change that if we want. Instead of using this option, we could use split items at edit cursor, select left. Change this to the S key. And now if we select our item, type S, it splits the item, but selects the left side. Or we can have it not change our selection at all. We could choose this option right here, split items at edit cursor without changing the selection. We could assign the S key to this. It replaces the other one. And now click here, type S. It splits the item without changing what's selected. In this case, both sides of that split. Now you see by default, Reaper fades out and fades in before and after the split. And that can be changed in the preferences. Control P on the PC, Command comma on the Mac, opens up our preferences, and we can go over here to the item fade defaults. Right up here, we can see the length of our fade in and fade out, or the length of our cross fades, or the shape of our fade in and fade out or cross fade. Right now it uses this shape, but we can change it to this one. And now if we split our items, it uses this fade out and this fade in. But we don't have to create fades if we don't want to. We can go down here to the section for split media items and turn off this option, which is on by default. But if we leave it off and split our item, it just splits the item without creating any fade out or fade in. Or we could leave this on and change this from no crossfade to overlap and crossfade. So now, instead of fading out and fading in on our split, it crossfades that split. This side fading into this side. But notice, it creates that crossfade on the right side of our split. If we wanna change that, Right down over here, it defaults to crossfade right. We could change it to left. Now if we split our item, it creates a crossfade, but it puts it on the left side. Or we could put it in the center. Split our item. Now our crossfade is right in the center of our split. But there's one other option we could choose. Right over here, instead of overlapping and crossfading, we could respect the toolbar auto crossfade button. And now with this toolbar button chosen, it'll create a crossfade. Or if we unchoose it, it won't. It'll create a fade out and a fade in. So we can choose it based on our toolbar button. Or just do it over here, no crossfade or overlap and crossfade. And choose which side of the split that the crossfade will be. Now, if you notice, because this item is selected, just that item is split. If you want to split more items at the same time, just select them first. We could select both of these, hit the S key, and then both items split together. Or we could do all tracks if we don't select any of them. Just type S, and it splits all the items in our project right at that point. 
And we could also split based on where we place our mouse without selecting the item. Go back to our actions. And instead of using these actions, we could use the split item under mouse options. Again, we could choose to do it, select left, right, or no change selection. Let's choose this one, change this to S, or use any keyboard shortcut you want. Replaces the other one. And now if I place my mouse over here and type S, it splits that item right there. And in this case, it selects the right side. Or let's change it to not affect the selection. So now put my mouse cursor over here, type S, splits the item right there, and doesn't change the selection. And we could do it wherever we place the mouse. Now you might be thinking this makes it harder to do multiple tracks or items, but it doesn't. We can still select multiple items like this, type S, and it splits both items in the same place. But it won't do all the items if we don't select them, but we could always select them first. Hit select all, put our cursor right here, type S, and it splits all the items in our project right at that point. But let's put this back to the default, which is this one right here. And notice it doesn't just split at the edit cursor, it also does it at the play cursor, which means we could do this on the fly. We could play our track, let's zoom out a bit, and just type S along the way, and it'll split our items based on where the play cursor is. So if we select our kick item and type S on the fly, we could split it at all those points. Or we'll do it on the snare track. Or we'll do all the drums together by selecting them all first. Or all the tracks in the project by selecting none of them. And it splits all the items in our project at that point on the fly, while we're playing our project. Now, if you don't want to use a keyboard shortcut to split our items, we can use a mouse modifier. Go back to our preferences and scroll down under editing behavior to mouse modifiers and choose the context media item, left click. This is what happens when we left click our items. We can replace one of these or just choose an unused one. I'm gonna choose this one, go down here to split item and just split it, ignore snap or ignore grouping. I'm just gonna split it. And now I don't have to use a keyboard shortcut. I can just hold down the modifier and click and it splits the item right there. And we could do it on this track or this track or multiple tracks by selecting them first. Just click, they split, or we'll select all the items and do it that way. Hold on the modifier and click, and all the items in our project at that point are split right there. Split it here, here, maybe here. So split our items on every track in our project at that point. Now we could also use a different keyboard shortcut like Shift S. By default, this is going to split our item at the time selection or razor edit. So now we can create a time selection like this. Maybe select just the kick track and the snare, type Shift S, and it splits our item at the beginning and the end of our time selection, just on the tracks that were chosen. If we wanted to do all the tracks, don't select any of them, hit Shift S, and it does it to all the tracks in our project at the beginning and the end of a time selection. We'll just do it to one of them like that. But we could also do it to a razor edit area. So if I create a razor edit over here for these two tracks, now I hit Shift S, it splits the item at the beginning in the end of the razor edit and removes that razor edit. And we could do that with one track like this, 
Hit Shift S, or do it with multiple tracks using multiple razor edits. So I could add in the shift key to create multiple razor edits like this. And now just hit shift S and it splits all of them at the beginning and the end of those razor edit areas. So it's really helpful for splitting multiple items at multiple places at the same time. So as you can see, there's so many options for splitting our items. And hopefully this inspires you to try different ones or different preferences or actions for you. So that's pretty much it. That's splitting items in Reaper 7. I hope you learned something. Hope you could use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go. Oh!